Hello, everyone. I'm Shannon Bream, along with Judge Janine Pirro, Richard Fowler, Charlie Hurt, and the Greg Gutfeld. It is 5 o'clock in New York City, and this is The Five. <laughs> Big day here in the Big Apple for Joe Biden and Donald Trump, both in New York City at the same time today. President Biden chatting with Howard Stern, telling him he would be happy to stand on a debate stage with Trump. Speaking of which, the former president was in court for day eight of his criminal hush money trial. Former National Enquirer Chief David Pecker wrapping up his testimony. And we got to hear from the prosecution's next two witnesses. Trump's former assistant, Ronna Graff, a 34-year veteran of the Trump Organization. And Gary Farrow, a former banker at First Republic when Michael Cohen was apparently seeking to arrange the $130,000 payment to Stormy Daniels. Trump sounding off on another day in court. Uh, this is all a Biden indictment. It's in order to try and win an election, political opponent, and nothing like this has ever happened. I've invited Biden to debate. He can do it anytime he wants, including tonight. I'm here. I'm ready, willing, and able. And if he wants, I'll do it on Monday night, Tuesday night, or Wednesday night. We'll be in Michigan, a state that he's destroyed. <laughs> well, the former president was certainly on the mind of the current president. Joe Biden repeatedly brought up Donald Trump while being interviewed by Howard Stern. I don't know if you're going to debate your uh, your opponent. I am somewhere. I don't know when. Yeah. I, I'm happy to debate him. I don't think the election's over yet on that score. What do you think's going to happen? I, I can't imagine you're going to lose, but... Well, look, um, he's promised if he doesn't win, there's going to be a bloodbath. Trump makes fun of me. Right. Uh, I, uh, he was the kind of guy in the neighborhood who wish he could have gotten in the neighborhood and meet head to head. Maybe like corn pop. Okay, the sit-down with Stern coming as Biden takes some friendly fire from the New York Times. The gray lady accusing the president of setting a dangerous precedent for avoiding interviews with most of the media. And despite Biden's best efforts to shuffle away from the press, Axios has an alarming new report out on his gate. Quote, instead of walking to and from Marine One by himself in the last week, Biden started walking surrounded by aides who are concerned that videos of Biden walking alone, especially on grass, have highlighted his age. Charlie, you can't stop with the giggles over here today. Well, it's, I mean, whether it's Trump talking about how he wants to debate Biden or the fact that uh, the real concern in the White House is that the tall grass is going to wipe out Joe Biden. And if you wonder why the economy is in the, in the tank, we have an open border and we have uh, all these wars popping all, up all over the place, it's because Joe, the White House is more concerned about shielding Joe Biden walking to the helicopter than they are about solving any problems. Okay, so, um, Greg, he says it goes back to the grass, which I know that you know something about. Oh, what, I don't understand that. Are you, are you <laughs> alluding to something? I just need you to Google it. All right. I, first of all, I love how these trials are fuel for Trump. If he's Popeye, lawfare is his spinach. Oh. He's not leading in the polls despite the trials. He's leading in the polls because of the, tri of the trials, and it's, and it's hilarious to watch. It really is. Who would have thought the Howard Stern show would become the safe space <laughs> for an elderly, clueless fossil? And also Joe Biden. <laughs> I kid Howard Stern. I loved him, but man, he has changed. Risk has now been replaced with reward. Uh, when you listen to the interview, he's completely defanged. and He's rendered kind of a, a, a harmless Stern, the opposite of what the brand that Stern used to be, but that's what happens when you get co-opted by power and famous friends. And it's weird to see this, see Stern switch sides. So you know, Trump, for many years, supported Stern, gave him his best shows. And I could bet you at that time, Biden would have branded Stern a moral hazard in need of censorship. So now you have Stern basically trashing Trump, who reflects the frankness of the Stern phenomenon. And instead, Stern embraces the precise kind of phony that early Stern would have mercilessly mocked. Now, on to your cheap gaff about the, gr uh, the grass. <laughs> OK, they're talking about a stiff gate. That's what they're, this is part of a bigger scandal that should be called feeble gate, right? It's a, it's a scandal to cover up Biden's ever diminishing function. Let's be honest, the only way that Biden can be can look younger is to surround himself with corpses. 
And it's not the walk that should be alarming. It's the dementia, which makes him even more oblivious to the destruction of all our institutions. It's the woke handlers who are ac accelerating our nation's demise, and he's just there along for the ride. Who knows how much longer he'll be there? I think it's also, you know, it's also hard to walk when you got a load in your pants. <laughs> That's why they call him Dark Brandon, Judge. Ask the White House Laundry. Mm, okay, we don't have any confirmation from the White House Laundry, so we're just going to move on from that. Uh, but I thought it was interesting, Judge, that there's a, part of this reporting in Politico about the people walking with him is he wanted more downtime, more less formal time with his aides. So the walk between the White House and Marine One is supposed oh, well, to be it? Oh, do it. I mean, that'll absolutely do it. I mean, look, look, the, the reason he's got his aides there is because they're going to ask him a question. It's quiet. There's nothing going on there, and they're afraid he's going to answer it. And they're the ones who are going to make sure that he doesn't say anything that's out of line. I don't, it's obviously, we already, we already know how he treats his aides. He curses at them. He yells at them. I mean, we've heard all the stories about what's going on in the White House. But, you know, I, I mean, I agree with Greg. I mean, the guy is, is uh, the guy's lost it. And what he's saying now, what he said on the Howard Stern show, he came up with even more lies. The guy's a plagiarist. He's plagiarized <laughs> his whole career. I think it was his 88 or 98 presidential campaign. Campaign. They threw him out because he was such a liar. And now he comes up with four new ones. He said when he was a lifeguard, he saved a half a dozen people from drowning. <laughs> now, you want to tell me why he waited until he was 81 to tell people about that? <laughs> no, number two. And he said, get this, he said, whenever he, as a senator, received salacious pictures <laughs> that women would give him, he would give it to the Secret Service. <laughs> Joe, you didn't have Secret Service when you were a senator, okay? Oh, then, then he said, when he was younger, he was on the porch with a black family. He was the only white kid on the porch with a black family. He was protesting segregation, and they arrested him. <laughs> Joe, why would they arrest you? I mean, okay, and then this is, he said he was a runner in, in, in state-scoring football. <laughs> What the hell is that? First of all, he always said he was the first one in his family go, to go to college. <laughs> then we heard that his grandfather played college football, and he was the best. I mean, you need to have drinks when you go through this. You know what? It's just ridiculous. And this man is representing us. He talks to Xi Jinping. He talks to Putin. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm going to need to go down to that end of the table and do a wellness check <laughs> on the judge down there. I okay, think so. Jinping should be a, the debate moderator. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, if you're free, it's apparently one. going down at the courthouse tonight. If you're free, um, they've offered to do it. Yeah. Well, at least one side has offered. Okay, so this interview, uh, where you find all these nuggets, it's Howard Stern. But the New York Times is upset because they say, you know, more traditional news outlets are not getting a chance at this. They say it should be troubling that President Biden has so actively and effectively avoided questions from independent journalists during his term. Avoiding interviews and questions from major news organizations doesn't just undermine an important norm. It also establishes a dangerous precedent that future presidents can use to avoid scrutiny and accountability. So, Richard, they're thinking not only about now, but is there self-interest also that other presidents will say, it's just not done that way anymore? Oh, listen, I think that's a fair point by the New York Times. And I do think that the president should probably give more interviews to the traditional press or those folks who sit in the briefing room. I think that's a fair assessment. Now, you know, I watched the same interview you did, Judge. I didn't have the same assessment of it. But that's all fair in love and war. There's a part of the interview that I really did appreciate the president talking about, especially at this point, this inflection point in our country. He talked about the time when he lost both his wife uh, and his daughter, and he talked about the ideal of what he was dealing with. He talked about thinking about drinking. He also talk, talked about the ideal of his own suicide ideations after losing both of his, both his, both his daughter and his, and his wife. And I think this comes at a time in our country where we know black youth, have, are, the suicide rate there is up 144%. We know that for college athletes, the suicide rate has doubled uh, in this country. So we have a lot of young people struggling with this. Too. To hear the president of the United States say, hey, listen, when I was a young person, I too struggled with this, I think is a real moment for him to say, listen, I'm feeling your pain. And this is what he's very good at doing. Whether you disagree with his politics or not, it's important to see our leaders say, I've struggled with this as well, especially as the nation and our young people struggle with it too. Well, too bad he does nothing about the pain. I, I'm all for feeling pain, but America is it's talking about it, Greg. I, no, That's no, how you talking, deal with it. Talking is cheap. I think someone said that once. Talk is cheap. Fact is, we have inflation, 
that is causing no, 20 suicide ideations talking about it's actually how you solve it no 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 <laughs> if you want to buy into that that's fine i mean but that's is, what the, he's that's done what nothing the, about the medical fentanyl. community says he's done nothing about fentanyl he's done nothing about crime he's done nothing about not, inflation he's done nothing about border which is which is increased ideations. gang crime Let's just be very clear all right i'll give you this i'll give you this you know what i'll give you this suicidal ideation is bad there you go you can have that point Everyone can agree on that. Yeah, exactly. And we'll leave it there. The president there's, talked about There it. is work to be done. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.